One of the most meaningful aspects of providing care is the satisfaction that comes from contributing to your client's well-being. Food can give a real sense of comfort and connection to older adults. Skillful meal planning and preparation are very valuable services. Enjoyment of good food in a friendly setting has a positive effect on happiness and well-being. Studies have shown that when older people are isolated at mealtime, they often become depressed and lose interest in eating, which leads to a decline in health. Your presence and care can help make meals a pleasant time for your clients, improving their well-being and overall health. Older adults absorb fewer nutrients from foods they eat, and the ability to digest fats decreases with age. Older adults need fewer calories to maintain body weight. The daily number of total calories for people over 70 should be between 1,200 to 1,600. Calorie needs decline by 25% for people over 70, yet protein needs remain constant or increase. Decreased ability to smell or taste food, illness, certain medications, and normal aging can lead to loss of appetite. Older people may not eat well because of dementia, illness, inability to shop and prepare foods, or loneliness. Instead of eating a variety of healthy foods, they may snack on high sugar, high fat, or high salt foods. These habits can lead to nutritional deficiencies or even malnutrition. For these reasons, it is important that older adults eat a diet full of fresh, healthy, unprocessed foods. Nutrition experts at Tufts University developed a new version of the food pyramid with dietary recommendations for people over 70. This food pyramid can be a helpful tool as you plan meals for your clients. As the pyramid shows, the foods that provide the best diet for older people are whole grains and cereals, bright or deeply colored vegetables and fruits, beans and nuts, low-fat dairy products, lean meat, fish, poultry, and eggs. Dietary recommendations are often described in servings. People no longer know what a healthy serving size is because often foods are served in supersized portions. Visual images can help you learn correct serving sizes. For example, one serving of meat or fish is three ounces, about the size of a deck of cards. For a green salad or raw vegetables, a serving is one cup, about the size of two hands cupped. One serving of cooked beans, rice, or pasta is a half a cup, about the size of one hand cupped. If the person eats one cup of beans, rice, or pasta, he or she has had two servings. Many foods come in one half cup serving sizes. These include cooked vegetables, cooked cereal, but cold cereal is three quarter cup for one serving, cottage cheese, pudding, mashed potatoes that include milk and butter, starchy vegetables including sweet potatoes, squash, and corn. One portion of cheese is two ounces, about the size of two dominoes. For some foods such as peanut butter, salad dressing, and mayonnaise, a serving is one tablespoon. Each day your client should have eaten six ounces of protein, so during the day, you might serve your client one three-ounce serving of meat or fish, as well as an egg, a half serving of beans, and one serving of nuts to complete the six-ounce protein requirement. Two to three servings of low-fat dairy products, one serving is eight ounces, one and a half to two cups of bright-colored cooked vegetables, a serving is a half a cup, two to four servings of fruit each day, one serving of fruit can be one medium apple, orange, or a half of banana, a half a cup of chopped, cooked, or canned fruit, or a half a cup of fruit juice. Six or more servings of whole grains and cereals per day. You may be providing two servings at a meal. For example, one serving of bread typically equals one slice of bread. So if you serve a sandwich, you have provided two servings. 
In addition, your client should have eight, eight ounce glasses of water and other liquids each day. Older people often lose their sense of thirst and do not drink enough water. This can lead to serious health problems. In order to assure that your clients drink enough water each day, encourage them to drink by providing water and other liquids to them often. Have a pitcher of water in the refrigerator that you encourage them to finish each day. We call certain foods comfort foods because they reassure us. Some foods are particularly enjoyable because they remind us of family or the place we think of as home. A care provider's goal is to supply the best nutrition possible in an appealing way. Prepare the kinds of foods your client prefers rather than the foods you prefer. If you are not acquainted with the types of food your client prefers, ask your client or a family member for some recipe suggestions or a cookbook. Good meal planning saves time and money and promotes health with meals that are appetizing, varied, and nutritious. Plan meals for a one-week period. When developing menus, pay attention to the total number of calories in the meal and its nutritional value. When planning meals, a simple book that lists the calories, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and sodium for different foods can be helpful. Generally, the total daily calories for people over 70 should be between 1,200 to 1,600. Including a variety of foods is important for good health. Different foods contain a variety of different nutrients, and variety adds color and texture to the meal. Use the Food Guide Pyramid for older adults as a guide when planning meals. Even with a limited food budget, it's possible to create tasty, nutritious meals. For example, you can make a nutritious meal with a couple of eggs, some whole grain toast, and a piece of fruit or carrot. The fiber in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains promotes good health and elimination. For example, fresh fruits and vegetables provide 2 to 8 grams of fiber per 1 cup serving. True whole grain bread contains at least 2 grams of fiber per serving. Use breads labeled whole wheat or cracked wheat. Be aware that breads labeled simply wheat or enriched wheat may not contain whole grains and are far less healthy. Food that is high in fiber is usually lower in calories. For example, one cup of cooked whole wheat spaghetti has 6 grams of fiber and 170 calories while the same amount of enriched spaghetti has only 2 grams of fiber, but 200 calories. Legumes, such as chickpeas, pinto beans, and lentils, offer 5 to 7 grams of fiber per half cup serving. A high-fiber diet includes 20 to 35 grams of fiber daily. Older adults may be following diets prescribed by their doctors, such as low-fat, low-sodium, or a diabetic diet. If your client is not following the prescribed diet, or if you notice a change in his or her appetite, report your observation to your supervisor. Any medically prescribed diet requires special attention in shopping and cooking. Sometimes um, a doctor will order for someone to be on a low salt diet and generally what that is is between 2,000 and 3,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Now sodium, when a, the difference between sodium and salt is that salt is made up of sodium chloride. So that's the two you know, different compounds, but sodium is actually the compound that will contribute to raising someone's blood pressure. And so that's the one that we want to watch. So um, if you were on a 3,000 milligram diet, an easy way to remember that is just that you want to have about 1,000 milligrams per meal. And um, a lot of people that aren't familiar with the metric system, that makes them nervous. But you really don't need to be because on labels, um, sodium is always in milligrams. So to follow a low salt diet, 
you want to try to eat as little processed foods as you can, but a lot of times older people are going to need to use some of those processed foods. So you have to you know, figure out how to work them in and pick the lower, the lower convenience foods that have sodium. But you, in general, you want to try to stay away from or limit things like canned uh, soup, um, TV dinners, um, teriyaki sauce, soy sauce, um, the salt shaker, one teaspoon of salt has about 2,300 milligrams of sodium, which is almost as much as your daily total. Rather than adding salt for flavoring, use seasonings such as lemon juice or vinegar, or herbs such as basil, garlic, oregano, and sage to flavor foods. If your doctor wants your client to follow um, a heart healthy diet, usually that, what that consists of is a total of no more than 40 to 60 grams of fat a day, depending off, on if you're a man or a woman, and generally not more than 15 to 17 grams of saturated fat, if you were looking at that more closely. Saturated fat is the main fat that contributes to um, uh, heart problems, heart attacks, and strokes. And that's found on the label right underneath total fat. And um, like I said, you don't want to have more than about 15 to 18 grams of saturated fat a day. And it's in foods like um, cream, whole milk, fatty red meat, butter, ice cream. Doesn't mean you can't have those foods, but you should be eating a limited amount of those foods because they do have a lot of saturated fat, even including cheese. Trans fats, the recommended limo, limit for trans fats, and that's found right underneath saturated fat on the label, the recommended limit is actually zero a day. So um, you want to try to avoid trans fats in most foods because those are not considered heart healthy either. Foods that have trans fats would be like stick margarine, um, donuts, fast food, uh, some forms of Crisco and they're really trying in the food industry to remove the trans fats from food because they know that they're not heart healthy. The most heart healthy of the uh, fats on the label would be monounsaturated fats and also a fat called um, omega-3s which is a type of polyunsaturated fat and um, simply put omega-3s um, are the fat that's found in fish so fish is really healthy for your um, clients and um, also things like spinach and flaxseed and walnuts. They have a lot of the good types of fat. And you can even include things like shrimp and shellfish up to a couple times a week, which also has omega-3s, but it has a little more cholesterol, so we limit those. Basically, a heart-healthy a heart healthy diet is a diet that's really rich in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and fish and, and some nuts and lean meats, chicken, fish, beef. And we recommend that your client doesn't have red meat more than twice a week, even if it's lean. And the leaner cuts of red meat would, uh, red meat would be rump roast, round, loin, sirloin. And that's a good rule to remember. If it has the word loin or sirloin, it's generally leaner, as opposed to like chuck or T-bone or ribs or sausage. Those are fattier red meats and contain a lot more saturated fat. To decrease fat in the diet, Use low-fat or non-fat milk for drinking and cooking. Bake food instead of frying. Trim fat from meat before cooking. Add less fat or oil to food. Eat less processed foods. Limit restaurant eating to one to two times per week. If the doctor has your client on a diabetic diet, um, one of the most confusing things that people um, do is they look at the sugars on the label, but we would actually want you to look at the total carbohydrates on the label. And generally, someone would get between like 150 and 200 grams of total carbohydrate per day. But an easy way to remember it is that most people are on between 45 and 60 grams of carb per meal. So a lot of times people, when they think, when their client's on a diabetic diet, they try to make it um, too strict, or they look at sugars. The, on the sugar line, that's actually included in the total carbohydrate. So if an apple had a label, it would actually say 15 grams of sugar on the sugar line. So you can't go by the sugar line. You want to go by the total carbohydrate line, 
And a good rule of thumb is if one food has more than about 30 grams of total carbohydrate, it's starting to get a little bit too high. So um, things that we generally recommend diabetics don't eat. Um, they can have most foods in small portions, but we recommend they do not drink regular soda pop because that's 49 grams of carbohydrate in one can, and that's as much as you should be having at a meal. And the other thing is regular table syrup because, again, that's about 49 grams of carbohydrate in a quarter of a cup, and you put it on pancakes, which is another carbohydrate. So that ends up being just way too much um, carbohydrates for that meal. Many foods, such as baked goods, candy, sugar-coated cereals, and chips, make them unhealthy because refined sugar has been added. Refined sugar comes in various forms, including dextrose, fructose, glucose, sucrose, or high-fructose corn syrup. Foods high in refined sugar should be avoided. Older adults have a higher risk of malnutrition than the rest of the population. Malnutrition weakens the immune system, increasing the risk of pneumonia and other serious infections. It can also contribute to mental confusion. Warning signs of malnutrition include an illness that affects the type or amount of food eaten, eating less than two meals per day, not eating a balanced diet, drinking three or more alcoholic beverages daily, tooth or mouth problems that make it hard to eat, eating alone most of the time, unintentional weight gain or loss of 10 or more pounds in the past six months, the inability to shop, cook, or feed oneself, change in the appearance of the skin or sores on the skin.